Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to A Chesama Chess D four played in nineteen thirty eight by Michal Botvinik. F6 played by the Cuban genius Jose Raul Capablanca C4 by Botunic and E6 This game is amazing and it is historical it is historical Because it marks a changing of the guard. Knight to c3 by Botvinnik, who was from the Soviet Union. And bishop to b4, pinning the knight and going into the Nimso Indian defense. e3 by Botvinnik the Bronstein variation, now considered the main line of this opening. So why is this historical? Who are these players? If you watched my other videos, you may know Capablanca. He was at this point a former world champion, and he is considered one of the best players to ever play chess. For instance, Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion, mentions him as one of the previous world champions he would most like a chance to play against. And Capablanca had been an absolutely dominant force in the world of chess, going as long as eight years without losing a game. But in 1938, in the Avro tournament in the Netherlands, he met Michael Botvinnik, a young man from the Soviet Union. And Botvinnik was playing with the white pieces. And Capablanca played d5. We saw the traditional a3 asking a question of the bishop. The bishop exchanges itself for the knight. It is recaptured by the pawn. And now we have c5. So we have a former world champion with the black pieces and a future world champion with the white pieces and not only a future world champion but also in many ways Botvinnik was the future of chess itself c takes d e takes d Ten years later, when Botvinnik became world champion, it marked the start of a an era that we are still influenced by today, an era of complete chess dominance by the Soviet Union. Every world champion would be Soviet, all the top grandmasters would be Soviet, and this is the first time we see the patriarch of Soviet chess, Michal Botvinnik, is the first time we see his brilliance. He plays bishop to d3. You may ask, why not knight to f3? Aren't we told knights before bishops? Well, this knight wants to go 
to e2 and it does not want to block the bishop so the bishop comes out first Capablanca castles and now came knight to e2 from Botanic and uh, but when it was also the future of chess in another way we saw b6 from Capablanca because Botvinnik went on to also become a pioneer in computer chess chess artificial intelligence which has been one of the most impactful concepts or ideas or technologies in, in the entirety of chess history now with the knight out of the way Botvinnik can castle and Botvinnik's big idea in chess AI was that he wanted to program the computers to think like humans Capablanca played bishop to a6 asking a question of this bishop what to do about that and one of his ideas one of his one of his ideas for what a computer should understand about chess to play like a human was a concept he called attacking zones which is a concept that is very instructive and also very 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 relevant to this particular game so bishop a6 here asks a question of this bishop this is the good bishop this is why it's good bishop because it is not trapped behind the pawns it can move um, freely conversely this would be why it's bad bishop as it is trapped behind the pawns but Vinick thinks it's not that simple and he actually captures the bishop bishop takes bishop and of course this is protected knight takes bishop so in a way you could say that Botvinnik is quite behind here because he helped develop a knight and he lost his good bishop but it's not that simple and the traditional the traditional chess ideas that we learned from the first world champion Steinitz which Capablanca had perfected to such a degree that he could completely dominate the world of chess for many many years they were being challenged by this young man Botvinnik saying there were more to chess than meets the eye and maybe this knight is not perfectly developed maybe it is in the wrong zone bishop to b2 it looks strange it looks like a it look like a tall pawn it doesn't look like a strong bishop it just looks like a very tall pawn kappa played queen to d7 connecting the rocks and in a way he's he has finished his development 
and it's not quite clear exactly what what is it white is doing here what's the point of this bishop what's the point of this knight how is white going to be able to make any sort of attack well there is a concept that we call pawn breaks maybe you sometime allow yourself a pawn break as well and that's not relevant only in life it's also relevant in chess and i will talk to you more about that in a little bit first we saw this a4 move what's that about well it's about the bishop making a little space here on a3 maybe it has a role to play the bishop Cabablanca continued his development rook to e8 taking control of this semi-open file a very logical move very Cabablanca-esque move now we saw queen to d3 which it does seems weird because can't kappa just play c5 just like he did win a tempo against the queen and lock this bishop in gain more at, uh, more space on the board as well he can and he did and Botvinnik played queen c2. All of this is actually part of a very deep strategical concept by Botvinnik. He is preparing his pawn break. He wants to break in the center and attack Black's king. He, he wants to first draw the lines on the battlefield in such a way that his pieces are on the right side of the lines and Capablanca's pieces are on the wrong side so what kind of plane could black have in this position? well if you try to talk to your pieces and ask who needs a better square you'll quickly understand that this knight is offside it has no Good forward attacking squares so it actually undevelops in order to start a maneuver a, a very deep positional idea like the ones Capablanca is so well known for where do you think it's going and how do you think Botvinnik reacts but when he is looking for his pawn break and he's playing rook on a to e1 indeed not rook on f but the rook on a he's moving the pieces away from the queen side towards the king side knight to c6 from Capablanca see where do you see where the knight is going do you see a nice juicy square for the knight knight to g3 now this rook supports the pawn on e and the knight is ready to join a potential attack against black's king Cover plays knight to a5. Now can you see the square? The b3 square, an excellent outpost square for black. But here comes the pawn break, the last move in preparation, f3. Kappa plans his knight on b3 
a very strong outpost square. This also disturbs the com communication between the queen and the a4 pawn. So that when Botanic plays e4, it comes at a cost. Specifically, the cost of this pawn. Queen takes a4. But now, White has, well, they ha he has given up a pawn, but he has now made his pawn break and he is now able to play e5. And do you see the attacking zones? Do you see that by tempting Black into playing c4? And locking his pawns in the center in this static configuration. He has carved the board into two halves. The half over here on the king side, white king side, and the other half over here on the on the queen side. The knight is attacked, it goes back. So relating to this concept of attacking zones, there was a move, and I will mention it when we get there, that Botvinnik played in this game. And he had as a um, he had as his benchmark, his goal, his dream of his chess AI, of his chess computer, that it should be able to find this move find that it was the strongest move. That is one more reason why this game is famous. Now the queen shifted sides and went to f2. It looks at f7 here. There's a pawn in the way. So let's see if we can do something about that f7 and you notice how Botvinnik has just slowly moved all of his pieces to the right side of the board to the attacking side of the board to the attacking zone and with that it starts raining Capablanca play g6. This prepares to play f5 as a defense against f4. So, but when it plays, if it plays f4, then we have f5, and here is a holy hell moment if you know that meme, because of course this pawn can be captured. Ang Pasang look it up, it's a real move, and it can be recaptured by the knight, knight takes f6. The pressure is mounting, we see f5 from white. This rook over here on a8 is not participating in the defense. So Capablanca exchanges one pair of rooks. One pair of rooks. Rook takes rook. Like so. Of course, rooks. Rook takes rook. Rook recaptures like so. And here's the point, Capablanca plays rook e8, saying let's exchange the last pair of rooks. I will recapture with the knight, or perhaps even getting back with the queen. Your attacking forces will have been substantially diminished. And if I get my queen back, I will be able to defend. I will also still be up upon. 
and I will be doing excellently. Of course, Potvinnik is not going to go for this, so instead he plays rook e6. This threatens the knight. This rook cannot be tolerated, so Capablanca exchanges the last pair of rooks. Rook takes rook, pawn takes rook. And now with all the rooks gone, Capablanca only really has the problem of this advanced pawn. The queening square is well defended by the queen and the knight, but it is still a good basis for attack for white. Capablanca played king to g7. The knight was attacked by the queen, so we just protect it. And now you could say that black is actually doing very well. There is only the matter of this forward pawn to consider. Other than that, we are up a pawn, we have a relatively safe king, we have this very strong outpost here, there will be a basis to roll forward with the A and the B pawns, queening and winning easily. That's the sort of game, that's the sort of win that Capablanca was famous for. Just a small positional advantage, gained early in the game. And he would roll on, roll on, and win in the end game. But there is the problem of this pawn. And there is the problem that it's not that easy to actually get over to the attacking zone here, or what would be the defending zone. But when it plays queen to f4, the best move in the position, it looks at c7 coming in with a check. But this gives Capablanca time to play queen back to e8. It looks like now he can adequately defend. He has a queen defending against the queen, knight defending against the knight. His knight here is offside, it's just an investment. It's it's something he put in the bank and he's going to He's going to cash out later, going to cash out the interest when he rolls forward with the A and the B pawns. So even though the knight cannot join the defense, the bishop also cannot really join the attack, it seems. So it seems that Capablanca has enough pieces to defend. But Botvinnik plays queen to e5 the knight, protecting the pawn, and asking uh, Capablanca exactly how are you going to defend. Because he has, uh, with the knight pinned, he has a deadly trap with knight h5 check, and after takes queen check and picking up the knight. So, uh, how are you going to defend that? Well, Capablanca says, I'll just play queen e7, defending the knight, stopping your pawn in its tracks. There's no longer a, a check on c7. What are you going to do? And here it is. Here it is. Here's the move. Here is the move that Botvinnik wanted his chess AI to be able to find. Here is the move that justify, justifies all of White's play. Can you find the move? How do we utilize the concept of the attacking zone? The move is bishop to a3, attacking the queen. 
find it interesting because this has been proven to be the best move. But if you just naively plugs this into uh, the chess.com engine and analyzes, it will say that it's a blunder that goes from white having a big advantage to the game just being equal or maybe it will say that black is uh, winning because of course black can just capture the bishop right you actually need quite a strong computer running the latest chess software for the uh, engine to be able to see that bishop a3 is winning but it is winning because what does it do it drags the queen away from the defending zone away from white's attacking zone into the other zone of the board here now the queen is no longer defending the knight so when Botvinnik plays knight h5 check and Capablanca captures the knight with the pawn and Botvinnik plays queen g4 check and the king has to go goes to c8 he goes to f8 there is no longer queen defending the knight so Botvinnik can capture the knight queen takes knight check he cannot go here check and mate so king g8 and the reason that uh, even the chess.com version of stockfish cannot easily find the brilliant move with uh, bishop to a3 is because it doesn't seem obvious that black can't get at white's king look how exposed that king looks and if you for instance exchange the queens well then black wins easily so uh, so the calculation that Potvinik had to do here is 11 moves deep so first he plays pawn to e7 this threatens to a queen or make a rook with checkmate also, also it threatens queen f8 checkmate so Capablanca tried the check Queen C1 check and would you be comfortable would you be would you trust your calculation that you could get away with the king in this position playing Capablanca King F2 only move Queen c2, check. King g3. Queen d3, check. King h4. Queen e4, check. Now threatening to come to g4, protected by the pawn. So Botvinnik bravely captures the pawn. There are more checks. Queen e2 check. And here it doesn't work to play g4 check because queen takes h2 check would actually be a very big problem. King h4 cover goes or perpetual check hoping for a draw but now we can actually play g4 and after queen e8 check 
Potonik has king to h5 and there are no more checks and there is no way to stop queen f8 check or you cover stop one of the checkmates you cannot queen the pawn with checkmate because the queen is defending it but there is no stopping queen f8 checkmate so this marked the beginning of uh, the Soviet chess dominance and from the Botvinnik school of chess Botvinnik actually made a real chess school after he retired and people like Kasparov went to that school so he influenced chess in the Soviet Union and by extension the whole world tremendously he was a brilliant a brilliant player with some very interesting ideas as well. I hope you enjoyed this game. I certainly did. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.